is there money in owning hotels? Like, can you profit? Yeah, definitely. I mean, just like, because so a lot of people, they don't realize that hotels are actually real estate. So yes. it's an operating business sitting on real estate. So not only are you profiting from the real estate component, you're profiting from the business component. That's true because you're yeah. buying a building. Right. You have the land. Mm-hmm. And then now you're running a business with people coming in and out. Mm-hmm. Which one is more profitable? So let's say for an example like me, let's say, you know what? I just want to get into real estate. Would you say get into the real estate side to where you just own the building? Or can you even own the building? Or like, like for example, will Hyatt want to come in and buy the building or will they lease the building? Uh, probably not a brand, maybe more so of a municipality. Okay. Brands, they don't own the hotels, so they probably own like less than 1% of their portfolio. They actually own the properties. Wow. So they friend, it's a more of a franchise model. Okay. So that scenario or example would be more so from like a city or something owning the land and then you can lease it out from them. Real. Yeah. Ah, I love it. I love it. I love it, boy. I love it. Boy. I don't know. You're getting a little too deep. You ready? Hey, man, listen. <laughs> you I, when you, I was, when I was studying, I was like, yo, this is actually not a bad idea because I just invested about six figures into mm-hmm. a fund. Yeah. Um, this one was actually for um, apartment complexes. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, y'all know me. I, 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 I try to do as much as I can possibly with cash. So I'm testing it out with this first thing, right? Uh-huh. But now I'm thinking, like, going down your road, like, okay, cool. I, I, I could see uh, for the real estate side of things, taking out um, some, 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 you know, mortgages or whatever that is to get into the game. Uh, because it seems like there's a lot of money in that space. Mm-hmm. But you need to be able to get in there with a good amount of money. Yeah, um, definitely cash is king. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's with anything. And um, also, you want to be capitalized. So yes. hotels are very capital intensive, um, you know, real estate. Okay. And it's complicated to get financing for hotels yeah. because they want to, because again, it's an operating business. Multifamily, you could just bring in the rent roll, you know, you're getting, you know, money for 6 to 12, 18 months. You know somebody's going to be coming in. Yeah. Hotels, it's a nightly lease. So you don't know if people are coming in. And then one thing about hotel, so multifamily and apartment complexes, people are always going to need a place to stay, regardless if it's the economy. Hotels is based on the economy. So if the economy is doing poorly, the, the hospitality, think about COVID. Yep, yep. yep. I mean, you got hotels, hotels struggling, sh- like shutting down. Yep. Well, that's how I ended up getting my hotels because we bought it during COVID. Oh, right. so you bought it when it was low and they were hurting. Right. And then you stepped in there like, boom, we coming back. See, I, see, I missed 2008. Yeah. You, I, I well, missed, we, we were young then. I probably, if I was smart, I had a little cash. See, I wasn't smart. What I wasn't you mean smart. you had a little cash? I had a little cash. Family had, took care of you? Family took care of me. So, so wait, wait, let's, let, 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 wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I, had good, I had a good grandmama. Your grandmama, she, she was. I didn't, see, I didn't, I didn't listen to your podcast. What you if mean? Your, if, if your podcast would have been on back then, you know what I'm saying? Listen, if my podcast would have been on back then, <laughs> I would be for the whole So your grandmama passed, passed down some wealth to you? Yeah. What? Yeah. She was still alive, but yeah, she made sure her grandchildren, it was just me and my sister, but yeah, she made sure it was okay. She set up um, college funds for us. For but really? since I got scholarships, I didn't really have to take advantage of it. Are you serious? Yeah. See, see, here's why I like that, right? Because yeah. I think oftentimes in the black community, yeah. we teach struggle. Yeah. We teach like, hey, you know what I'm saying? We all had to struggle and fight through it. Yeah. Your story's a little bit different. You had to fight, but fight differently. I had to fight differently. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't so my I didn't wrap my brain I didn't wrap my brain around what my grandma was saying when I was Ooh. younger. I was young. I wasn't yeah. it wasn't clicking. I knew everything. Yeah. Like I wasn't so she always told me to keep a paid off house in the family. She she always said keep a paid off house in the family. She Come said, Oh, grandma. Oh, yeah. So now I'm taking it to the next level. So I'm going to keep a paid off hotel in the family. Hey! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the goal. Yo, grandmama said, Yo, we're going to keep both in the family. Yeah, but she did, it didn't resonate. Like, you know, my grandma, she died with no debt. Okay. She paid off her funeral. She paid off her funeral 10 years before she died. Yeah. Yo, rest in, rest in heaven, grandma. Yeah. So. I know she's smiling down right now looking at you. Sometimes she be, you know, shaking her head a little bit. That's but, life. You know, you know but that's saying? all right. She that that keep that keeps me humble. <laughs> Man, yeah, 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 that's good. So yeah. I, I like that. So yeah. grandma set you up. You always have an emergency fund. Always. Yeah, you keep know. your credit good. There you go. Yeah, yeah. your credit your credit is your name. She said her credit is her name. Mm. Yeah. You know, I don't have a credit score. Well, I do. Yeah. But I don't. Yeah. I have a mortgage. Yeah. I don't have a mortgage. Only mortgage I have is for my hotels. Yeah. I'm just doing what my grandma said. It's clicking. It's clicking. (laughs) 
<laughs> she was like, huh? you got a mortgage, I don't, you know. Hey, Melissa, I'm going to be there one day. Give me some love on that, though. I like that. She was like, I don't have a mortgage. Um, so, all right, cool. I want to get into the hotel business. What's yeah. the first thing that I do? The first thing you want to do is make sure that you're financially capable of getting into the hotel and business. And what does that look like? So oh, Let's talk about on the personal side. So on the personal side, so it's two directions you can go. You can go the passive route, you can go the active route. So what you just said as far as with the multifamily you are talking about before, it sounded like you went with the passive route yeah. because somebody else is running it for it. You just invested passively. I invested. Okay, so that's passively. So that's passive. It's like because you have a business that you, you know, running. you're running. This is your baby. You're like, you know, let me just let my money grow and somebody's going to handle it. That's yeah. the passive route. So okay. that's one route you can go. Okay. Okay. But you still want to make sure you have enough money that you can lose because investing is risky. Yes. So if I don't recommend for people to invest their life savings or their, if they're saving up for a house, right. I don't, I don't recommend anybody to do that no matter how good the deal is because it's risky yes. and you don't know if you're going to get it back. Anything you're investing. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So that's one route. Okay. So the next route be if you want to own it yourself. Like if you want your name on the mortgage, yep. um, you know, name on the franchising agreement, um, you probably need to be capitalized, at least have a depending on the size of the deal, but half a million to a million dollars. And yeah. that doesn't just that doesn't just have to come from you. Okay. It could be you got a hundred. You got four of the friends. They got a hundred each. Now y'all got half a million. So but you, then the name, but the, it'll be in my name. So let's say I got me, you, I got my producer, and, and my right hand man, Alice. Right. So that's yeah. that's four of us in this building right now. Yeah. So that's let's say we we all come up with a half a million dollars. We give it to you. Mm. You take that half a million, but the mortgage is in your name, and then you will make contracts with us, saying I'm an investor into your. That's hotel. the passive route. Okay, so and if you want to do like, let's say we all come together and we form a partnership, and you want to be a GP, then that's the active route. So maybe, so maybe you know, maybe your role, my role could be I'm raising capital or something, or ne negotiating, you know, with the brands. And yeah, maybe yeah. since you have relationships with the banks, yep. then you're working on the the, the bank side. Like nice. everybody like has, has a, role. a role, and so since everybody has a role, so maybe you put in like one fifty, somebody else put this, and then your equity split can be based on what you contributed to the table. So the average person is not going to have a half a million dollars to invest. Some people do. Some people don't. Especially if they're going to capital or route as far as in getting the capital. Yeah. Pe people the money. typically on the first time, talk, not too, I mean, unless they come from a, a different, like a right. well, well off background, typically people don't have. I don't see it too much. Too much. Know. All right, yeah. cool. So let me answer this question. And you know, I'm a, you know, you know, I'm going to answer with you. Okay. Uh, if I'm drowning in debt. Okay. On my personal side of things, yeah. should I go borrow another half a million dollars to invest into the hotel? Uh, Think no. <laughs> no, and and I'm and I'm not a financial advisor, and I always yeah. say to that, talk to your financial advisor because every every situation is 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 different. Um, but it's like you know, if you take in, if you have half a million dollars and then you got personal. Drowning. You're drowning in debt. Yeah. I don't personally think that may be the best decision. That's why I was saying that the first thing you should do is check your personal financial statement, oh. right? Or check your personal balance sheet. Oh. And if you don't know how to do that, then work with the financial. So that's that's why I always say that's the first thing. She cool with me, y'all. That's cool. the first thing. She cool. She 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 cool with me. Cause I was gonna let her answer. I want her to be her true self because yeah. I mean she's she's I mean she got 30 million. She's sitting on 30 million in her portfolio. So I always respect everyone's opinion. But no, if you're drowning in debt. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend it. Don't, don't, don't do that. I, you know, I get that a lot. You know, people are like, oh, my credit is messed up. I'm like, you know, go ahead and get your credit fixed first. Absolutely, yeah. And then come back. It's okay. I Just mean, go ahead and get that get that take care of. And here's my thing. Why are we building on a rocky foundation? Right, you know exactly. And, and and as I'm growing, as I'm evolving, I am changing just a little bit of my ways. And yeah. I think when it comes to real estate, especially within a black community, we need to become owners. Yeah. And that is why I invested the, uh, the passive route. Right. And I gave six figures because you're right, I have this business, this brand uh, that I'm building. Well, that's not your expertise, right? Yeah. And, and then it's going to take you so long. Now you're taking away from from what you're really doing, exactly. what's your passion to focus on this. You exactly. know what I mean? And that's not. So let's say someone says, oh, you know what? I don't have a half a million. I don't have the opportunity to do that right now. You know, I just got out of debt. I'm just now built my emergency funds. So I only have $10,000, $15,000 right now. It sounds like their route may be maybe going towards like the passive. The passive. Yeah, their route is the passive. And you are now even offering uh, like a fund type thing, right? Yep. It's called uh, it's a crowdfunding platform. It's called Vester. Vester. Yep. Okay, yeah, yep. Yeah, so yeah. we are probably one of the first um, uh, crowdfunding platforms for hotels. So break this down. And I'm talking about to, like to the kindergarten level because my people are like, okay, what are y'all talking about this? 
that's crowdfunding. What is crowdfunding? Crowdfunding, essentially what it is, is old school. It's people pulling their funds of, of, of money together. Remember that 15,000 example you just used? Yep. So, you know, let's say 10 people coming together uh, at 15,000. Now you got 150,000, you yep. know. So yep. let's say, let's say, Anthony, you wanted to buy your hotel. Right. Right. But you needed a million dollars and you only had a hundred thousand. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And so you put the deal on the platform on Vesta.com. We okay. go through the due diligence and everything. And so you want to raise the rest of the funds. So now we have, you know, folks from your community or friends and family, they can actually invest. They can come in at the 10,000 cause maybe they didn't have a hundred thousand. Mm. So they can come at the 10,000. Maybe they could partner with their family. They got five, the other thing, and they can come in and now, you know, they can invest. And this crowdfunding platform, both accredited and non-accredited folks can invest. <laughs>